It's an interesting parable. It seems as if Jesus is uh, uh, honoring dishonesty. But that's obviously not the point of the parable, not for us to be dishonest. The point of the parable is to show us sometimes we have to sacrifice immediate gain for the sake of a long-term gain. See, the steward realizing that he's going to lose his job, he brings those who owed money to his master and asks them to reduce the amount that they have to pay. Because the way the system works is the rich man will get a steward and he'll tell him, okay, you have to give me certain amount, gallons of olive oil, certain amount, bushels of wheat, or whatever they planting. Then the steward will go, he has to hire laborers. And they do the same thing. They write a promissory note saying, I will give you back, you know, 30 pounds, 30 gallons of olive oil. But the steward, the dishonest steward, didn't ask him for his, their fair share, but kind of added more oil or more wheat, whatever they produce, so he can make a gain. And that's why he was willing to exchange their promissory notes in a way, giving away his own profit, thinking that when he loses his job, hopefully these men, they'll think they are, he's so generous with them that they'll take pity on him and bring him into their homes because he will have no job. The same thing for us. All our blessings are a gift from God. And God expects us to give back part of what he has given, back, uh, given us. And God is challenging us to sacrifice some of the immediate gains, the gains of this world, for the longer profit that God prepared for us. A home. A home not in someone else's house, but a home in heaven. And we do this in our normal lives. You know, we put money aside or we invest, we buy insurance policies. We're paying money now for that later on we're going to need some help if we get sick or we're going to need help if our house burn, burns down. And that's why Jesus said that the people of this world are more prudent in how they deal with their affairs. We, as the people of the kingdom of heaven who believe in eternal life, who believe, who believe in the promise of Jesus, how are we investing in our eternal home? How we are preparing ourselves that one day Jesus will come, welcome us to heaven? It's through our charity, through our concern, our love for one another. It's by developing a heart like the heart of Jesus, who bled for everyone unconditionally, who didn't demand anything from anyone, but hopes that this gift of love is reciprocated back to God, to Jesus, by loving one another. If you remember last Sunday's gospel, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, strength, soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself.